For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a new music generation AI that is open source and can be run locally on our own machine. This is called Ace-Step, and this is really quite interesting because this, for me personally, is the closest thing I have seen that can be run locally and is open source with the Apache 2.0 license that is comparable to state-of-the-art closed source music generation models like Suno or Udio. Now, when I say comparable, of course, it is not necessarily at the same level, but to have something that's even this good locally is fantastic. So let's take a quick look at this, what it is, and then we'll jump into how to install it and we'll do some sample generations with it. So a step, as we can see right here in the GitHub repository for this repository, <laughs> It is an open source music generation model, or as we can see here, it is a step towards music generation foundation model. Now, they do talk a little bit about this. The technical report does not seem to have been released yet, so I don't have to kind of read through that and pretend I understand it on camera, which is always good. Um, <laughs> but in the abstract here, they basically talk about how this is a novel open source model for music generation. Current methods face some limitations, and the current methods they refer to are LLM-based models, and then they mention some here, or some diffusion-based models such as diff rhythm, etc. Now, I have actually tested diff rhythm, and I think that is the most recent open source music generation library or model that I've tested. So to have a step above that will be awesome. They basically talk about how this bridges the gap by integrating diffusion-based generation with Santa's deep compression autoencoder, which I think came from some lab at MIT, don't quote me on that, and a lightweight linear transformer with some other kind of like techno jargon right here. But really, and most importantly, what's cool about this is if we scroll down here to the kind of features that it has, it supports 19 languages with 10 well-performing languages. So a lot of times when things like TTS or any audio related things come out, unfortunately, they've so far been pretty limited to performing well with English or Chinese. But this really would allow people to use this in their native tongue in a far more reaching audience than some of the kind of things we've seen lately, which is fantastic. They talk about it supporting many styles of music, instrumental styles, etc., and things like that. Interestingly, if we scroll on down here to the chart, this talks about how it is much faster than real time at generating audio. So for example, if we were to do 27 steps for a one minute generation, that would take 4.7 seconds to generate one minute of audio in whatever song style you want here, or a 12.76 times faster than real time generation on a 3090. We can see that if we use 60 steps here, which would just kind of denote a higher quality product more than likely, it will still be around six and a half times faster than real time taking 9.26 seconds. So this is really quite interesting. With that, there are some prerequisites here. The installation steps are quite simple, and they do mention Windows, Mac, and Linux. So if you are on Windows or Mac, which are sometimes less supported with more experimental repositories like this, you're potentially in luck. I can't say for certain because I will be running it on Linux. Now we are going to jump right into the installation steps. The only thing I want to mention that I find very interesting here is in the coming soon section, all the way on the bottom, they talk about essentially having something for this where you can give it an acapella vocal track, which is essentially like just me talking right now with no underlying music to it. And it will then generate a full instrumental backing to go with that audio track, which could make for some fairly amusing generations in my opinion, but is also quite interesting. So with that, we're basically gonna go ahead and install this. First and foremost, I am going to use a Conda environment for this, so I am just going to create the Conda environment in cor correlation with what these instructions list right here, which this will do right here using Python 3.10, and it will automatically basically say yes to all of the Conda packages that need to be installed by default. Once that's done, we are just going to go ahead and activate our Conda environment, and the next step, not that I would forget such a thing, is to go ahead and make sure we actually clone this repository first before we do anything else. So we will just do a simple git clone and then paste the repository link there. Once that's done, we are just going to change our current working directory into the cloned repository right there, which is called ace-step. And then we can scroll back down to the installation section. And basically, because I'm using Conda, it can get a little confusing, but we're basically going to skip from step two right there sorry, to step four down here, which is where we go ahead and install the requirements.txt from within the cloned repository folder that we just did the git clone on. 
Now, a lot of mine will be cached, so it will go perhaps a bit quicker than if you're doing this for the first time. And once all the requirements have been successfully installed, we are basically just going to go down to the usage section right here and just run python app.py, which will spin up a Gradio interface from which we can go and get our first look at this. Now, of course, we will also need to have the model files downloaded as well, which I think were between 8 to 10 gigs um, for the actual download but that won't start until you go to the Gradio web interface right here and then actually click generate, which if you have not downloaded them prior to this, like you see right here, it will go ahead and basically just download everything to your local system, which will take a little bit of time as it is like a, call it like 10 gigs. So we can see that once the model files have completed downloading, it will just go ahead and begin to actually generate the song for this prompt right here. Now I do have to apologize for one of two things. Um, no, for only one thing. <laughs> when I play the songs, I know that it sucks having to do it through that speaker right there. I don't have anything to do line into my audio interface. And I could download and save these generations and then place them onto the computer I edit with. But um, a lot of the stuff I play with, I like to just keep on one machine that's isolated from everything else. So kind of transferring files that were generated with these libraries over to a different machine on a different network is not something that I'm security consciousness. I, I just, I can't do it um, currently. So I apologize for that, but we will listen to this and I will be very quiet during. Alright, so as a sample generation there, I just wanted to do that because it shows us that this actually has some decent ability and quality wise. I am not going to promise that for the duration of this video, I'm going to be doing things that would actually sound good as songs. But I did want to just show that this is capable of producing relatively high quality output, something akin to probably previous iterations of those closed source state of the art music repositories or I shouldn't say repositories, I should say products. So essentially a few things here. There are some basic settings and advanced settings. And honestly, as I go through these, I find that the best way forward here is to basically just close them and know that I have mentioned them, but not talk further about them, at least for the scope of this video. The audio duration section right here is actually kind of cool because minus one, as it's set to right now, basically means that it will generate a song that's length is kind of just determined by the generation itself if you will. If you want to actually play that, you can set it anywhere from one second of audio that it will generate up to 246, four minutes, six times four, yeah, <laughs> four minutes of audio right there. So basically, I'll probably just do a lot of like funny 30 second snippets and things like that. And if we hit the sample button right here randomly, it will actually generate a bunch of different, I think, I don't know that these are like truly random, but it will allow you to actually play with some different styles here without having to do much thinking on your own, which is obviously pretty nice. So we do see that it is loaded in right here right now. It's using around 16.9 gigs of VRAM. When I tried this before, it was up around 22. So maybe that will climb as we do more generations or maybe I had something misconfigured. But with that, um, I basically aggressive heavy riffs, blast beats, satanic black metal. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're, we're going to chat GPT. With that, we're just going to do a few maybe fun and random things here, but really I just wanted to show the install process, how much RAM it takes, and some of its features more than I care to kind of show a lot of musical samples with this because those can be um, generated by the self. But we can see how fast it is right here. So how fast it just generated all of that 42 seconds of audio, which was significantly faster than the actual 42 seconds it generated. Again, that goes back to the real time factor right here. Something I didn't mention that I think is prudent to make note of is that for a lot of TTS stuff, at least getting low latency is the kind of golden 
ticket, if you will, where people want that so it feels more realistic and human-like. So it is very interesting to me that this is able to generate audio in a very fast manner that would probably go hand in hand with achieving that low latency speech style thing. So just a thought, but let's hear our aggressive heavy riffs, blast beats, satanic black metal, Python calculator script. I have no idea what it's saying. That was, uh, uh, yeah. All right. So let's try something perhaps a little more legible to the ear, if you will. I'm not sure what the terminology for that would be. <laughs> And then we'll just see, and then we'll do like real sounding um, <laughs> lyrics and not this. <laughs> and again, it's just, it's so fast, which is crazy. Except the value error, print, print. <laughs> Not bad. That was very Persian Santur like. Also, I want to just make note that I'm not being racist. I am actually half Persian, so it's not like I'm like doing that, like making fun of the instrument. So, all right, we'll see what it does for an instrumental here. I did also put spoken word. All right, I. Well, that was definitely an experience. So you may be wondering, can this generate like NSFW or weird stuff? And to be honest with you, I would say, you know, it is our responsibility to use these things responsibly and with candor and respect, and it absolutely can. So basically with that, we're just going to do another <laughs> generation right here. Um, and, and we'll just see. I'll probably have to, you know. All right, so we'll just... You just go ahead and take a look at this one. Cancel it, the cancel we slap back, make me feel how it'll tell you how. <laughs>
Let's go ahead and see how this does generating a song about a Wikipedia article on the Transformer. <laughs> the machine learning style Transformer. Not the car or the electricity based style Transformer. I also would highly dissuade anyone from pasting any perhaps famous pieces of literature into this, um, depending on the source. <clears throat> The Transformer is a deep learning architecture that was texture that was Dershers at Google and is based on the multi-head, it's bay-head attention mechanism, Ooh. which was proposed in the Dumoulin-Disha set. Paper retention is all you need. Transformers have the advantage of having no recurring units, units that form requirement earlier, recurring during neural architectures, <laughs> such as long term term memory. <laughs> I love the way it, the way it's saying like recurrent neural networks, but they're in parentheses there. <laughs> recurring units, units, they're for requirement earlier, recurring during neural architectures. Rins! <laughs> That's why I love these things, because they're really quite entertaining. Like, my suggestion would be to, like, have a few friends over, if you have, a like, a GPU to run this, and then just play with this for, like, a, an hour or two, and you likely won't get bored, depending on um, the type of friends you have. So... <clears throat> that's probably gonna <laughs> wrap this up i like i said i have played with this prior to the video and will likely continue playing with this following the conclusion of the video so um this is really cool it's definitely to be a little more serious for a second a step closer to getting more state-of-the-art style music generation in the hands of folks who can run these things locally the barrier to entry is a little high so i am seeing around 16 gigs of vram right now or 17 being used which again isn't abhorrent totally comparatively to what it would actually take prior to this to get songs like this which is just paying a service online or signing up for their platform etc so yeah, around 17 gigs, which is not bad. I'm not sure why I saw it using 22 earlier. That may have been user error. And again, the actual, I think, ramifications of seeing something like this that can produce audio like this, that contains speech and is very able to be controlled stylistically and directionally is very interesting in terms of lowering latency and other things like speech, uh, text-to-speech systems, which is of interest to a lot of folks, myself included. So this is definitely cool and a very nice neat piece of software or model obviously it's more than that that came out and can be played with so that's going to wrap it up if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments and thanks for watching